Welcome. <coughs> welcome. Um, so first I'd like to thank, we have our host, we have uh, APL and JPL and also Aerospace Corp. And then, I don't know if you know, this is the workshop. The reason that we paid a fee is because we have great sponsors that take care of, um, you know, paying for everything. So this is wonderful that they've given us a first, you know, the Monday they've carved out. Um, so we have a very tight day and we realize it's too much probably for one day. Um, and we have not scheduled any breaks, but if we see everybody totally zomb you know, zombied out, we'll, we'll figure out a way to get a break in there. And actually, I was hoping to have Subod here, but we can jump into that later. If there's any logistics for lunch, I'm not familiar with the options there. I think they, I've been told they have a really good cafeteria um, that's really within walking distance. And I'd also like to introduce our session chairs. So the way we've divided, we have four chairs, and bear with us, we're all working part-time on this, so we, you know, we're pulling this together. Some of this might be a little, you know, real-time as we go. So we had them organize themes, and and uh, we think it's going to work well. I hope. And so we got Susie Streggy, who's uh, currently chairing the configuration control board for the the NASA assets, and she's also our Goddard lead. So she's working with our projects and making sure they're happy. Then Jonathan Wilmot, who disappeared, um, <laughs> he's our chief architect, and then Alan Cudmore, who's all things platform abstraction, so operating system abstraction layer and platform support. He's the father of that and the father of twins. Um, <laughs> so, um, and then myself, I'm currently, I've kind of been with the CFS since the early days and played different roles, and I'm now currently the Flight Software Systems branch head. Um, but uh, I've, I've been really passionate about this whole project and seeing it going. We probably started it early, oh, something. Probably around 2000, honestly, some of the seeds for it. And, and one of the last things I was happy, even though I'd like to play a technical role, but it, it, I was the GPM flight software lead, which launched in 2014. And that's where my boss at the time said, you know, if you're the lead, you can, you can help funnel some money that way and just don't tell the project manager. So, so that's actually a lot of the apps came and Susie was a CNDH lead at the time. We got a lot of that. Those apps that went open source were done under the purview of um, GPM. And that's kind of how the way the CFS to date has worked. <laughs> We haven't had an institutional NASA project, but we've um, been able to leverage funding in different various ways. So it may not be, we'll get to that. That's in a whole other section, so I'm getting ahead of myself. So a little history, I thought it'd just be a little context, and maybe some of you know it and bear with me, but I think it's good to get a little context and know, kind of even like the funding model, why things are happening the way they are and where we are. So back in, 2007, or before then, was the birth of the core, and there's some nomenclature confusion too. This is why it happened. So we had the core flight exec, and actually before then, you know, Alan had come up with the operating abs system abstraction layer, and that was released. And then we, um, we, we came together, we had a reorg at Goddard a little prior to this, and that's when we got all our flights off for people together, and we realized we definitely had product line potential there. And then in um, 2007, and it's a very quick history. So we, uh, that was our first mission with LRO, was our first mission that used the Core Flight Exec and OSAL. And actually, oh, they helped fund the CFE, so it was kind of another joint effort. And, and actually, uh, we went to the moon, and I guess Laddie actually crashed into the moon. So we, we've done both, so <laughs> intentionally. And then, uh, then we had the Core Flight System, which is, so that's the way we use that name is really everything. So that's just, once we added apps to this thing that we had evolved, we uh, said, well, we got to call it something. So that's where the system came from. And currently, initially, I should say it was 12 applications. And once again, we leveraged some project funding. And then uh, Johnson also Class A uh, certified a particular target to the Air Inc. 653 and kindly brought all that stuff back into the, into the product line. So it's got some great um, additions to it. And so 14, um, so we're not two, now we're two years ago. So then we released our apps as open source and that actually I think officially happened this January 15. But we had our, this was a big deal and Mike Aguilar, I don't see him here yet, but he really helped, he's in the NASA Engineering Safety Commission or committee. And he helped fund getting everybody together, everybody being NASA organizations in one room so we could start hammering this out, how we could make this work across NASA. So. 
we had that, and that's where the birth of the CCB came from. So then from 2015, we are kind of in our young. So we've released the apps. We, the CCB actually started getting coordinated and running as a team, and they released CFE 642. And another significant, in my mind, and it's still true today, is that since LRO's launch, we have not changed the CFE API. So that's been very stable from an application point of view. And that's, that's part of the success that's happened. And then last year at Johns Hopkins APL, we had our first CFS workshop. And we had a lot of fancy goals there, and I'm going to go through a couple of them. <laughs> we realized some, and some we're still working on. And then now we're kind of in our adolescence of what I consider it. Uh, we've released multiple components. Uh, we're having our second workshop, but I, I, I say we're, then these are my words. We're trying to find our identity because we are a you know, government institution. But we're, we've released it as open source. We've got a lot of great feedback. We're not really operating, and again, some of this is my own, as an open source community. So we're working as a NASA organization, and we're kind of, you know, we're, everybody's intent, we want to give it away and make it grow, but we've got some challenges ahead of us too. If we truly want to be an open source community, with feedback and depends. We haven't identified contributions formally, you know, how things work. We have it working within NASA. Um, and then I thought it was uh, worth going through just two slides, just because I don't know everybody's background in the CFS. I thought it was worth just showing two quick slides on the architecture, because they kind of set the stage for some of the, the whole organization and the agenda, because it's really architecture focused. And this, this one slide, and this may not even, you know, People may not think of this all the time, but CF, when we did it at Goddard, we were really, what we were trying to solve was reuse and getting a good return on reuse. And we had reused products before where we claimed the reuse, and most of the time it was clone and own. But we really didn't reuse the whole life cycle of artifacts. So part of the design that we did, very intentionally, was try to get as many life cycle artifacts we could. So you're reusing the whole life cycle. And that, so that, so what this is trying to show, and if it doesn't quite look like a V, but whoops, let's see which. Oh, oh, ah, that's not the pointer. Oh, that's back. I don't want that. Let's see if we can get it to go back. Oh, that's okay. We'll skip a pointer. So it's, it's kind of like a class V, classic V. And then, so we actually, so we have the subsystem requirements. In our world, that's the software, um, high-level software requirements. And then we have the detailed requirements that we code to. And that's where we actually started parameterizing requirements. So then the, those flow into the code, which are parameterized in head of fires. And it's not always a one-to-one -one requirement. Some of them are, I would call design parameterization. So then you go over to the verification side of the world, and we got the unit tests that are captured with the artifacts themselves. Typically, a mission would do their own integration test. We actually did look into you know, generalizing some of those, but that never really took off, or we had the resources. So then we have build tests, which are also parameterized with the, they ingest the header files, so those can verify the requirements. And then a system test, again, was left up to the project, if they were going to use their own scenarios. So that's kind of the artifacts. And we'll probably get into a little bit. I mean, it's, these are, since again, it was grown out of Goddard, all the build tests to date currently run on a system called Assist. And that's a ground system we use, it, not exclusively, but it's one of the ground systems we use at Goddard. So that's what's delivered um, with the product. And, I get, and if anybody has any questions, please don't. This is, you know, meant to encourage, um, you know, discussion here. So, so quickly, again, uh, the, the layers, so then here's the basic layered architecture, which is held up very well. And so all the green is open source. So we have at the bottom layer is the OS abstraction layer, uh, the platform support, and then we have APIs. So these APIs, and they've also been pretty stable as well. I don't think they've had very little change. So then what they do is allow the core flight exec, which is these services that exist for the applications. Um, so they, they create a portable platform across, you know, we, so that's this abstracts our platform. And then these services, then we have that API, which I said hadn't changed since LRO, and then now we have this runtime environment for our applications. And then we're also, which is actually, it's working well, and we're seeing, we'll get into that later with the whole proliferation of uh, applications. 
<coughs> so, so the goals today, and, and again, um, we, some of this is my, we haven't actually, you know, it's not like we've, we're all working together, so I, I say this, we, we're, we're shooting ideas across, but it's not like we sat down with a committee and said, here are the goals and we're going out, you know, so some of this, and if anybody has any other objectives today, that'd be great. We want this to be an interactive goal. So, you know, but we want to get an understanding of the current state of everything, so that's important that people understand that. And try to, and part of the workshopness of this is to get an understanding of where we want to go. And so I work, hoping to really get some feedback from people. And to me, we want to challenge ourselves, you know, where do we really, um, where, where could we be? And we know there's things being a government organization, some things are hard. And just, and again, we're not going to solve everything here, but if we can start with some of the initial strategic paths of thinking where we want to go, that'd be great. And so hopefully we'll be connecting people with ideas and hopefully having some fun too. It's, it's not all about. So, so the agenda, uh, so the strategy is we've, we've taken two approaches. So we've got a programmatic track, what's called a track, but session. Then we broke it down into technical sessions that match with the architecture. And pretty much what I just said, we know, where are we now? Where do we want to be? And how do we want to get there? And again, we want it open, you know, what's not working, what's working, what technologies are important. So if we find out, you know, we'll come out with what's sort of a bit of a prioritization. Um, oh, I thought, yeah, I threw this one in there. <laughs> and maybe it's good or bad. It, this is from last year. So I threw up and said, oh, you know, last, so last year we had a good workshop. We had 12, it was all about user presentations. So we just said, you know, most of it was. And we got, we had 12 user presentations. So That's why we took a little different tack this year. So that was great in understanding where people were taking it. And we got a mixture of that. So, so, we, so here were the goals. I was just going to kind of go through where we went. So we, we discussed our informal community charter and a formal charter. We still haven't gotten there yet. So I won't give, I won't give a letter grade to everything. So, so get feedback, that was, I'll give, okay, I will. I'll give an A to the A's. <laughs> so needs improvement on number one. Number two was great. We got a lot of understandings, and we've, and we've had a lot of good discussion. Um, the product management, CCB's doing a great job, and that's all wonderful, but from a, a higher level perspective, I think we still need to do some homework. Communications, we were using mostly emails and the CCB and self. Um, there, we finally got a public website started last week, so hopefully that'll be a, the starting point. It's not where we want it, but again, um, it's, it's a start. Uh, and we actually, we had the idea, and I think it's still there. This is still a valid idea of having some kind of collaborative or virtual teams that we can have, you know. Um, we'll bring some examples of that later today, where they're, you know, it's still going to have to take resources to have a structure, but where they can engage with each other and, and then our other was reduced risk of fragmentation. I don't know where we stand on that, actually. I honestly can't. We, I know at some application level things we've kind of diverged and we're trying to converge again. But I, don't, I think the core product itself, nobody's kind of run off in a tangent. But somebody can tell me otherwise. <laughs> so here's, here's the agenda, if you haven't looked at it. So, and I don't want to go in too much depth. But like I said, we had the chairs for each session. And they've taken some you know, liberty and how they want to organize it. So we're going to go over Jonathan's sharing the standard and tools. Then we got platform abstraction with Alan. And then Susie's leading the application layer. And she has some, um, and if, if a name's not there, it's typically the session chair that's running it. And then I'll be going over some, I, um, this idea of kits that's been going around, and which is good. And I'll be doing that session. Then we have some user presentations, which is great. And then I'll try to conclude. Hopefully draw some conclusions from the group, and I'll um, see where we want to head after this. So the strategy in general for the technology sessions, and, and you're not going to see, every, they're not going to be like, you know, this was a guideline, and, and this is part of the thinking. You know, I'll be taking notes during their technology sessions and seeing if we can, um, for especially capture the ideas that were discussed. So if we do an inventory of that particular area, so that's what you, some of you saw, emails floating around. We're trying to capture. And some of it will be real time. So if you've got things that you've been working on, you know, please let us know about it. Um, so we're trying to do an inventory, what's duplicate, maybe what's missing, and highlight some key technologies, like you saw some 
Like applications easy to think of, we were talking about file transport and the different things people are using, or the Simulink interface layer, which is, uh, we'll get into that. And we had some user presentations, which were more technical in nature. And then, well, at the end of, you know, at the session, what I'll be trying to capture is, you know, trying to gel out what, you know, where are the directions that are coming. And then, uh, and, and, and trying to, you know, assess what kind of community organization and product management we might need to support what I'm hearing. And I'm not going to go through the, here's just an example. This is something in the kit world that we wrote down for ourselves. So it's, and this is for the Goddard kit. And again, it's not trying to, it's just an example of trying to look at a roadmap of technical strategic activities and how they relate to each other. So on the, on the top level, we said we have our kit that's just a ground system and a CFS running together. Then what that enables, if we, you know, if we had a standardized kit, you know, missions could do regression tests. We could, and if we're freely available, you could give that to anybody as opposed to the current build tests that are only run on assist. I mean, you could give that. And so what this diagram is saying, well, that's an enabler of that capability. And then you could also, you know, if, again, if we had this freely available kit, we, they're not written. If we had platform certification test suite, anybody that hosts their own PSP and OSAL combination, they could rerun the certification suite. And those are the type things that could be enabled. I, I put down file transport here because if you're going to have a kit and have, you're going to need, you may not need it for these two features, but you're generally going to need some kind of file transport that's in this kit that's freely available. And by that, you're going to have to have a ground engine and a flight engine for transporting files. And, and what this was showing, you know, then we have this electronic data sheets, which we talked about later. They're, they're not directly related, but they would impact this ability and hopefully simplify the whole effort. And, and that's kind of what this is. This is, and again, I don't want to, it's not necessarily this thing. That's the type of thinking as the day goes on, thinking about some of the things that are going on if we want to try to get teams working together. Um, so I'm going to go, so the programmatic session, which um, again, we're mostly technology, but we will have spent about an hour on there. And there it's going to be similar, but it's just along different parameters. So we're going to be thinking about, you know, what's difficult What's not working? What are the scopes of the assets controlled by NASA? What are the scope and the level of contributions people can make? And right now it's, you know, closed pretty, I mean, and, and again, it's, there's the philosophy questions. Of do, how do we want to, do we want to open it? And then the question is how? And is the business model sustainable? I mean, we're currently, as you've seen, we're, we're borrowing. <laughs> it's, it's leveraging project money, which is always a challenge in most organizations. Then we want to assess where we want to go, similar, same kind of similar. And, and during that session, I have, you know, I throw out a couple ideas. And again, they're meant for discussion, not as this is where we're going. And I, like I said, we're not solving everything here. We're trying to work towards it. So the good news, we have a public website now. And thanks to the partners at the Shrek, the Center for High Speed Reconfigurable Computing, got most of that right, I think. And they're down in Florida. Actually, they just split up. So there's a section of them there that's up in Pittsburgh. And so they helped us host, and Vantage Systems lent some support as well. And we're kind of taking an evolutionary approach. Again, we're getting a favor. <laughs> and they're, they're helping us out. And so the first one is at least get discussion forums and documentation out there. So I think that's a big, big step in the right direction. Um, we couldn't do that with our NASA website. And then, Ideally, and we don't know whether we're going to host things there or whether we're just pointers to other locations. It's just an inventory there. That's kind of where we want to get some direction from this workshop. But we're hoping that can also be the focal point. And then, so currently what we have is just discussion forums. We'll, the Q&A is that's where you might want to post a specific question. It's common to a lot of websites. So forums, we want to, you know, Let's say somebody wants text-based tables, and they want to look at text-based tables. And that's a great place to throw out an idea, and everybody can you know, join in. Blogs will be, you know, they're more newsworthy and focused topics. And then we have this, what we call a knowledge base, and that's going to be reference material and articles. So kind of conclusion of the intro, um, kind of beginning with the end. So, we want to see how we can, you know, 
organize this, the information, and that's what I'll be trying to capture. Locate for collaborative opportunities, then the website will be part of the enabler of doing that. And I just want to mention, I don't know, how many people were at the small sat satellite conference? Anybody? Just one? Just one, two? I highly recommend three. That was, I mean, I don't know if you got the same energy level I got, but I tell you, we're, I feel like we're at a special place in time just with the CFS and that. Um, I went this year, the whole, well, most of it. Last year I went only to a couple days, and they have a CubeSat weekend, and then they have a SmallSat week. And the CubeSat weekend last year was 500 people, and I heard it was 300 people the year before in 14, and it was 1,000 people this year. And we actually had to move the auditorium because the last minute because so many people. And when, and especially when um, IV and V got up and talked about NASA, IV and V talked about their kit. I mean, they just the, the response they got was great, and the number of people that want to use wanted to use their their kit and get started, especially from the CubeSat community because they're a lot of the CubeSats are starting. You know, they got a lot. They got hardware people involved, and they so they have the, such a hardware mentality, and then they software as a second thought. And, they, and when they saw the kit, and they, they could see the leverage that, I mean, the advantage it gave them. They were very, very excited. So, um, so with that, um, any questions or anything before we get going? I guess we can't take them online. <laughs> so, sorry, guys, online. I hope, hope everything's going well.